Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! Welcome back everyone, uh, here's your Sioux Falls physics teachers looking at an example of two objects meeting. Um, in this example we're looking at Wiley Coyote and the Road Runner. He begins with a velocity of 2 meters per second and accelerates in an attempt to catch the Road Runner. Uh, the Road Runner runs at a constant velocity of 5 meters per second and begins at a distance of 10 meters in front of the coyote. So if we look at our diagram here, uh, we see first of all that the road runner has a head start. Okay, so here's his location, 10 meters ahead. He's also traveling faster, but the coyote is accelerating to catch him. Okay, calculate the coyote's acceleration if he catches the road runner three seconds later and it also wants to know their location at that time. So there is one important thing about this type of problem that always helps set it up a little bit more smoothly to begin with, and that is the key that these two objects are going to be at the same place. Okay, if the coyote is going to catch the roadrunner, then at some point they must be located at the same position. Okay, so the position, or we could also use the uh, variable D here, the position of the coyote, subscript C, at some point needs to be equal to the position of the roadrunner. Okay, well remember that we have a nice long equation for the position of an object. Okay, and what we're going to do is actually start by writing that all down. The key is that we really need to write it twice. So in other words, we have initial distance, and notice that even though we talked about a lot of cases we can ignore that term, this will be a situation where we will not ignore that term. Initial distance plus initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. All of those things for the coyote, will have to be equal to all of those things for the road runner. So it's kind of like we're saying everything over here on the right side of the equation for the road runner, that all needs to give us the same answer as everything over on this equation for the coyote. So now, um, what are the pieces of information that we have? Well, we have several things on our diagram. Um, we're going to start by putting some variables with them. Notice that the coyote begins with an initial velocity of 2 meters per second. So that is the initial velocity of the coyote. The road runner begins with an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. So they each have an initial velocity. Okay, the coyote over here has an acceleration, which is unknown. The road runner runs at a constant velocity. So that means the acceleration of the road runner is equal to zero. There's one other piece of information that we need to incorporate here, and that is the fact that the road runner begins 10 meters in front of the coyote. Now there's actually two ways we could incorporate this. The easiest is to say that this position right here where the coyote is, that's going to be our initial position of zero. Whereas the road runner is going to have an initial position for the road runner of 10 meters uh, ahead of him. So positive 10. 
Uh, notice that the other alternative would have been to make the roadrunner at position zero, and if that's the case, the coyote would have been at negative 10, and we would have ended up with the same result. So with that said, uh, let's go through our equation and write in the numbers that we know. Uh, the distance for the coyote is zero. He does have an initial velocity of two meters per second. And notice that the problem does give us the time value, uh, which is three seconds. He also has an acceleration, which is our unknown. Uh, notice we still do have the time value of three plugged into that term also. For the road runner, initial distance is 10. He also has an initial velocity of five meters per second, multiplied times the time of three, but no acceleration, so this term can simply cancel out. A uh, little bit of algebra here, and again, notice uh, maybe a little bit longer equation than some that we've done, but if we break it down, it's not a big deal. Uh, six over here, one half a times three squared over here. On the other side, you have 10 and 15, which gives us a total of 25. From that, we can solve for acceleration, which is 4.2 meters per second squared as the required acceleration for the coyote to catch the roadrunner in three seconds. The last part of our problem then asks us to find their position or their location. And notice that um, this at first looks a little bit difficult because we don't see any other unknowns, but up here we started with the assumption that either side of the equation would give us that location. Uh, so we had the position for the coyote after three seconds and the position for the roadrunner after three seconds. And so really what we can do then is solve either side of the equation to get that position. Now notice um, we do now have an acceleration, so we could solve for the coyote. But if we look at the roadrunner, it's probably a little simpler math. And so we would find that both of them are equal to 10 plus 15 or 25 meters as their position and notice that remember if we set this point here where the coyote started as our zero that 25 meters then would indicate 25 meters to the right of his initial position.